Hey there, welcome to Watercolour Wiz. This is episode 10 and we're going to be painting this coffee, coffee pot. Um, so the colours that we're going to need for this <coughs> are going to be a, um, a blue and a brown. And the blue I'm using is French ultramarine blue and the brown I'm using is burnt umber. But if you haven't got those exact colours, any mid blue will be fine and any sort of chocolate coloured brown would be fine. And these two sit more or less opposite each other on the colour wheel. And so when they mix together, they mix a close grey, not an exact an exact grey, not a true grey, but a close grey. And the overall colour of the coffee pot is grey. So that's what I'm aiming for. Okay, so if you make sure that you've got your two colours ready, I'll see you in the next clip. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is wet the whole inside of the coffee pot. And the reason I'm going to do this is so that when I drop my colours in, I'll have time uh, to manipulate them and move them around before everything dries. It's easier to paint onto moist paper than it is to paint onto dry paper if you're planning to move tones around and alter things. So I'm going to go off camera while I wet the whole inside of the coffee pot and if you can do the same thing too, that's great. Right, I've wet the entire inside of the coffee pot and I've given the, the water a minute to soak in and then I've touched up areas that have gone damp and when, they, when it's damp there's no shine on the paper. I want to make sure that they shine all over the paper. So if, you, if your jug doesn't look like this, don't proceed. Make sure you've wet it again and that it's got this moisture all over it. You'll notice that it's not running with water, okay? And if there are any sort of little puddles starting to build up when you tip it, just drag them back in and share them around so that you've got a uniform moisture all over your jug, okay? So to create a grey, I'm going to pick a little bit of blue. And a little bit of brown. And I'm getting a nice grey there. It's like a tennis match, you're batting back and forth trying to judge if that's looking like a grey. And you can always test it on a little bit of paper, okay? That's quite a nice grey, isn't it? It's quite a nice coffee pot grey. So what I'm going to do is drop this colour over the whole inside of the coffee pot. So I'm giving it a general local colour. And as we look at the coffee pot we say, oh that's grey. So what that's what I mean when I say local colour is generally what the colour that something is. Say a tomato's local colour is generally red. Okay? A lemon local colour is generally yellow. So the coffee pot is grey. So I want to get this colour all over because then if I want to lift out a highlight, I've got something to lift out from. And if I want to add some darker tones, I can judge better how dark I've got to go to show the different planes, for example, on those, those sort of facets of the coffee pot shape. So getting some local colour on first is a really good plan. And it's easier to do because I've already wet the coffee pot, so the paint bleeds out nicely and does a bit of the work for me. Okay, so I've got some grey on there. So as I'm looking at my coffee pot now, that's my original photograph. And this is a posterised grey scale. And a posterised grey scale is where I've exaggerated um, the, the light and shade a bit to make it easier for me to see what's going on. And so when I, when I squint at this bottom one, I can see that there's definitely darker here, there, the handle, this right hand side, the bottom of this, the bottom of the top half. Then there's middle, then there's some darker tones around the base. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get those darker tones on now. So more colour and it's going to be thicker. But again, you, you need to use judgement because these darks you put on, you don't want them to be too dark. And this is why it's the fine arts, because there are fine differences and there are no formula Formally, formally, is that the word? There's no formally. You've got to you, you, use your judgment. Now that dark grey I've just mixed, look, that's not a bad, you know, complement to the paler grey that's already on it. So let's get this, let's get these darker areas in quickly now while my paint 
it, well, my coffee pot is still moist. So that if any of these dark areas bleed too far, I can come in and suck them up with a thirsty brush, which I'll show you in a moment if I need to. Well, I will need to. But first of all, let's just get some dark on and then we can be manipulating that. You've got to get some colour on in order to manipulate it. It's like a writer who does a first draft. You've got to get something down on paper before you can then improve upon it. So painting is the same. Get some colour on and then you can fiddle with it as, you, as, you, as the painting progresses. So I'm concentrating on getting some of those darker tones down here. I'm using my grayscale as my roadmap. Okay. I love using these grayscales. It's really liberating because you can see, oh, I've got to go really dark there. Or I've got to leave a bit of light here. You know, it, it all helps you develop your artistic eye. Because as an artist, you've got to care about light and dark more so than colour. Because light and dark is what creates form. Being good with colour won't get you form. You've got to be good with looking at light and dark. Okay, so make it your business. Right, so already we've got a little bit of shape on this coffee pot. Got a little bit of form coming, okay? So now I'm going to mix a more, a gooier mix again, a more viscous mix again. So I'm going to pick up some more of that burnt umber, mix it all through, mix some of that fr a French ultramarine in there as well. I'm going for a darker, more viscous mix now <coughs> that I'll paint wet into wet because it's still moist. You can see the shine all over the paper because everything's still moist. And this will this will help you if you're using 100% cotton paper because cotton paper stays wetter for longer. Let's try that. Right, see that's that's a nicer dark to those. So we're going pale, mid, dark. Okay. Right, let's get these real strong darks in now. Let's get them in and see what happens. Right, the lip of the jug has got a darker tad there. And there's a bit of a dark bit there. So I'm looking at this all the time. This is what I'm copying. If you're wondering about the highlights, don't don't panic. We're going to lift those out shortly with a thirsty brush. So if this dark bleeds too much, don't panic, we will lift it out. We will carve out the highlights in a, mi in a minute. Okay. And the thing, the great thing with doing wet into wet is that the paint will only flow where there's, where there's water, you know, um, it won't flow out onto the dry paper. So you've got a sort of barrier in which to play, which is fab. And this handle is really black, isn't it? So you can load a lot of dark paint in that. There's a bit of a bulge in the handle which I want to accentuate. And this is dark here. Right, let's get some more dark on the base. There's a bit of dark around. There's a little nut or a little screw or something there. Right, so there we go. Uh, it's a bit fast and furious, isn't it, doing the initial dropping in of colour. Your heart is in your mouth a little bit. I'm just being really accurate where I want to show some nice angular uh, parts of this jug on the outline. The outline does a lot for us. We can see it's a jug from the outline. When we look at a shape or a subject, the outline tells us more than anything else. Okay, so I'm paying attention to these sort of, f f uh, these facets, these planes. They're like one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, traveling around the shape of the coffee jug. So at the outline, I'm being as accurate as I can with that. Right, now it's time to wipe out the highlights. I'm nearly, nearly finished. So I've got a Matthew Palmer uh, lift out brush. You can use any 
short, flat brush, that's fine. Flat brushes are better for lifting. So I'm going to moisten my brush really well and then dry it on my towel. So now I've created um, an absorbent brush and I shape it like that so it's really fine and accurate. And now I can cut out, see these highlights down here? Rinse your brush each time once you've done a lift. Because if you don't, you'll be rubbing that dark grey paint back into the coffee jug. Then on the lid, there are some of those little marks. You've got to reshape it each time, otherwise you'll end up with a curved line where you want a straight line. You might need to do the lift a couple of times in some areas where there's a lot of pigment still sitting on the paper. So, so do it. Lift, out, wipe, uh, rinse your brush and wipe your brush again. Then there's some little accents here, little highlights here along the, the lid. See the form starting to come now? And what's happening as well, if you can see it, is there's some separation between the brown and the grey paint, which is a really nice. Okay, so let's lift out some areas that might have got lost in the middle. Oh, actually, this one. Let's wipe, wipe that one. That's quite a thick one there. So I'm taking out more there. I'm going to zoom in a bit more now so you can see it more clearly. Let's tidy that up a little bit. And if anything uh, bleeds back in, I've got to go back in and lift it out. So you constantly work in this until the paint begins to dry so much that, that, that there's no, no more movement then, okay? So you work in with the paint as it dries. There's an arc there, a bit of a highlight there. And an arc there. And if I really push that arc... It shows up this little groove, this little sort of dip of darkness that is a, around the midriff of the jug. And it's a very strong highlight here, isn't there? Because where that's butting up against the, the plane of the jug that's going into dark, it's a very strong light, very strong contrast. So that's nice. Let's get that in. So we're forming the shape of the jug pot. Show you it from far away now. Right, I've got a blob there, so that's catching my eye. So to get rid of a blob, you've got to do it quickly while things are still moist. So I'm moistening a size four brush. I flicked it on the side of my plastic jug, and I'm going to very quickly just swoosh it around and blend it up so it's not so eye catching. Right, that's a bit better. Okay, let's carry on lifting out. There's a there's a, a highlight here. Here. I'm going to retake some more pale out of this area, make it highlighted much stronger again. Because you only need a couple of uh, planes, you know, to show the shape of the jug. And, the, and the, re, uh, the viewer can do the rest, okay? You haven't got to spell everything out. The viewer, the viewer can see from that outline that I mentioned earlier, this, this little silhouette that is a coffee pot. So that's all you've got to do. You can be a little bit sort of poetic and leave some things unsaid, unfinished, because you've said enough in other places. Remember that as an artist, unless you're doing hyper-realism painting where everything looks like a photograph, you, you've got leeway to just leave some things undone. A little bit of lost and found, a little bit of mystery, okay? Right, so that's how it's looking there. 
Let's see if I just tidy this line up a bit more because it's a bit wonky. There. Right, now we're more or less there. I'm going to leave everything dry and I'll see you in the next clip. Okay, everything's bone dry now and I, I'm reassessing my jug and I can see that I need to go a bit darker in some areas, don't I? It's a lot darker here, there, on this bottom left hand sort of corner. So what I'm going to show you now is a bit of dry brushing. Okay, so I've got a, this is a flat brush that's been rinsed and dried. Okay, so there's practically no moisture in there but there's this tiny bit. Then I'm going to pick up some of this slightly uh, gooey mix that I was using. So it's, it's not runny, it's not watery. Okay, and then I'm going to brush I'm going to brush it up very lightly and over part of the highlights that I did because I can see that they are too bright and let's have some of it here, pick some more up let's brush some up brush some up from the base and the win this dry brushing gives me a bit of texture like this is an old battered coffee pot you know and it's got a bit of texture along its uh, surface see that's strengthening it up a little bit now let me zoom in a bit closer for you sorry so more of that mixture and if you feel you need to turn your painting you know feel free to sort of turn it to work at these angles a bit better I feel that the lid Needs a bit more of this dark as well. I'm turning my brush this way and that to get the angle I need for each of these triangular shapes. And that dark goes up into the, the lid. So I'm chipping away trying to make those triangular shapes with this flat brush which has got a nice sharp angle. This is also a bit darker. I'm going very tentatively. Get these shapes in now, these finishing shapes. Where else do I need to darken it? I'm squinting at my painting so that I just see where the dark areas. That could be a bit darker there. And I feel that one had a tiny bit of dry brushing there. And this highlight is too strong, so I'm going to paint over that with my dry brush, just diminish that. So I forgot to add a few little touches uh, as I was doing this painting, and so I'm just going to add those in. And one of the little touches I forgot to do was to put in this little bolt or nut where the electric plug must go in. So I'm just going to zoom in again and show you, just pop that little shape in there. I'm just using a very dark, you know, version of what we've been using already on the jug. And then I feel like underneath this sort of rim, the middle bit could have a bit more uh, of a darker touch. And again, I'm going to let the line be a bit broken, so lost and found in places. And then come to a quite a nice point over these two... Uh, plates uh, uh, that sort of form the skirt of the bottom of the coffee pot, okay? And this one, th these are the real, the real, real strong darks. And then it comes down and that's a definite change from very light or light struck to dark, isn't it? So let's get that in. 
more evidently. There. And I might even have a little bit of a dark line. Very fine. Again, lost some foam coming down the middle there. And they see, see this one. I've lost the shape there a little bit on that. So let's correct that. I've gone over it a bit, haven't I? Let's get a little sh shaper brush. So I'm just going to use a moist brush now to reclaim that shape that I've lost. Just suck that paint out a bit. Chisel it back into shape. So I'm basically carving with my thirsty brush, carving the shape. And actually that, that light, thin light goes right down to the bottom there. So I'll put that, that's a bit better. Okay, then other areas where I feel I could have gone a little bit darker. Let's just separate the base of that, the knob on the top of the lid. A bit darker there maybe. And this, let's separate the plastic handle from the metal bit and then that's this have this very dark corner of the metal jug in a darker tone again so these are really fine tuning touches now okay That's a bit better. And I've noticed that my that my lid is a little bit wonky, it's going up a bit, so I'm going to correct that. There's a little sort of circle there, a little rivet maybe where the jug fixing is attached there. And a little bit of dark on the corner of that jug. Okay, a bit more dark under the rim here. And this is much darker than I had done it originally, so I'm going to darken it now. And take a little bit of dark up there as well. So the, these are all the fine tuning bits now. So it goes up like that. And a little line separating those. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a painting, you know, you literally you can't see the forest for the trees and your judgment isn't so good. And then when you come and look at it again, something just jumps out at you. And it's done that to me today. So I'm coming back in to correct the things that are jumping out at me. So the, the lid, the angle of the lid isn't quite right. So I need to bring this triangular shape down a bit I think I'm gonna have to paint the whole thing in so yeah and then this bit needs to come down as well a few millimeters it was just all out of sync wasn't it so I'm just bringing it down now. Hopefully that looks, yeah, that's sitting a bit better now, isn't it? Yeah, let's just put a bit darker there. I'm not, I know I'm not following my tonal map exactly, but that's because I'm making a correction of something I did wrong. So sorry about that. And there's a little line there, which signifies a sort of lip. I'm going to 
put the sharp accent on the lip of the jug there as well. Okay, that's a bit better. The Right, I feel that's sitting a bit better now. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to add anything else now. I'm going to leave it alone. You could go on fine-tuning and fine-tuning. Feel free to do that if you want. That these videos are meant to be under 30 minutes, so that's why I don't go on as long as maybe you can at home. So if this one has gone over a little bit, I apologise for that. Okay, and there is our coffee pot. Right, I'm much happier now. That lid just wasn't right and uh, I didn't have the little dark bits in amongst the rim here. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Watercolour Wiz. And if you have enjoyed it, will you, please would you give them a video a thumbs up, click the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, would you feel like clicking the red rectangle that says subscribe on it and then straight away clicking the little grey bell to the side because then you will definitely get alerts when another watercolour whiz comes up. And if you can do the best thing of all is if you feel like making a comment about this watercolour whiz, if it's helped you and you make a comment, please can you actually type the words watercolour whiz somewhere in your comment because that makes my videos really easy to find and puts watercolour whiz up there you know so i hope you really enjoyed that and if you do want to become a patron of mine you can get the, the gray scale you can also get the outline for not just this watercolour whiz but for all the other watercolour whizzes i've done um if you become a patron of mine for as little as three pound fifty a month you get all of this plus you get over 30 full length tutorials on all sorts of subjects dating back to last August so you have an avalanche of art material to enjoy at home in, in your own pace. Okay so the link for my Patreon site to look at my membership levels is in the description of the video and there's a little link at the end of this at the end of this video as well. So I hope that's helped you enjoy your watercolour. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next episode of Watercolour Ways. Bye for now.